So I never liked the tanks in Super Mario Odyssey. It's kind of weird, but whenever Mario captures one of Bowser's shooting military units, the gameplay, it just feels off. There's just something that doesn't feel right about them. So I never really looked into this in more detail and just continue to enjoy the amazing game that Odyssey definitely is. That is, until recently. Because recently I was happily scripting a video about the worst boss fight in Super Mario Odyssey. You know, we rant a bit about how so many bosses are too easy, we discuss which wedding planning rabbit is the best wedding planning rabbit, we turn on some overly dramatic music while watching a gigantic stone face crush our good old friend Mario. You know, everything is as you'd expect it to be. And then, then I began to script the part about the Mecha Wiggler. And well, you probably guessed it already, I ended up scribbling almost 10 minutes of words about the tanks in Odyssey and still haven't scribbled down everything, I felt the dramatic urge to scribble down. Thing deserves to be its own thing. So today we'll talk in way, way too much detail about why the tanks in Super Mario Odyssey are really dumb, why using them doesn't feel great and why I hate them. Also, um, this video isn't really like a clever meta commentary about anything of value, like the Catsuit video was about Nintendo's community management or anything. It's honestly just me ranting about tanks for 15 minutes. Awesome. So are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so as I see it, there are three cardinal tank sins that the tanks in Super Mario Odyssey commit. We'll discuss all three of them, starting with the worst one. So let's talk about the first of the three major cardinal tank sins. Let's begin by talking about controls. So unlike one may would expect, the tanks don't use tank controls to move around. For anyone not familiar with the term, tank controls mean that the controls are relative to the orientation of the thingy we try to control. Like in a Mario game, if we press forward, Mario runs forward. If we press right, Mario goes to the right. If we press left, well, left is where Mario goes. When using tank controls, however, this is not always the case, because tank controls aren't relative to our orientation, but to the orientation of our character. When controlling like a tank, pressing the left button means that our character moves to his left. If he was facing left, that means downwards. If we now press forwards, then our character moves downwards, because it is his forward. So the old Resident Evil games used this control scheme famously, but since then it well, it basically went extinct. It turns out that it's just not that great of a way to control a character after all. Anyway, so the reason I'm bringing this up is, well, if there ever was a moment to go into the dusty attic of forgotten game mechanics and to open the ancient rusty box of game development techniques that fell out of favor in order to pull out the tank controls for one final time, well, then it was for the tanks in Odyssey, but they missed their chance. Instead, they decided to go with shooty shooty bang bang controls. Whenever Mario captures a tank, the gameplay shifts from platforming into, well, into first person pew pew game for a bit of it. We suddenly switch to classic FPS controls. One stick controls our Mario tank, while the other stick controls where the tank is looking and shooting at. At first glance, that sounds awesome. Running around as a tank, pew pewing powerful mushroom missiles and making question blocks go boom. Sounds like awesome times to me. And awesome times it would be if they didn't butcher the controls beyond recognition. The aiming controls to be precise. So check this out. This is what happens if we spin the left stick in a circle while brutally mind controlling a Sherm. The silly tanks are called Sherms by the way. That's a reference to the M4 Sherman tank that was a tank often used by the Allied forces during the Second World War, which it is a weird reference for a Mario game, but whatever. So if we just spin the left joystick in circles, this is the movement that the Sherm makes. It moves in circles, as one would expect. Hooray! Now this is what happens if we spin the right stick in circles. Anyone notice the problem? It's a bit subtle, but this is the first major cardinal sin that the tanks commit. The tank's aim moves faster on the vertical axis than it does on the horizontal one. One side just is way more sensitive than the other. It's a tiny thing on paper, but this is the main reason why aiming with the tanks feels off. You know, if the crosshair is currently here and we want to shoot something that is there, then the logical impulse would be to move the joystick diagonally upwards. But moving the stick diagonally upwards doesn't move the crosshair to the wonderful point that we want to reach. We actually overshoot our target and end up aiming at this ugly place. 
EU. That's no exaggeration by the way, that's literally what happens. If anyone ever felt like something was off with the aim of the tanks, but wasn't able to pinpoint what it was, it is very likely because of this strange implementation. I'm still baffled as to how unbelievably silly this aiming design is. But that's actually not the end of the story yet, because after we move the right joystick for a while, the speed with which it moves on the horizontal axis accelerates until we move much faster than we do vertically. So one axis at first moves way too slow and then way too fast in comparison to the other axis. So it's a bit weird to even say that, but um, designing precise aiming controls like this is, um, it's really dumb. When we want to precisely adjust our aim, then the aiming works differently than it does when we just roughly adjust to where we look at. This makes it almost impossible to get a feeling for how to aim with the tank. And that's not even considering the fact that the different axes should never behave differently in the first place. So honestly, I've been scratching my head about why Nintendo decided to implement the aiming in this silly way for the last couple of days. And there is honestly just one possible explanation I can think of. And that is that it is because of realism. In reality, a tank has an easier time to adjust its aiming vertically than it has horizontally. Or at least I presume that's how tanks work. I mean, probably. It's not that I ever drove a tank in real life or anything. Actually, I don't even know anyone who owns a real tank. Anyway, so if the tank controls like this because of realism, then Nintendo really got its priorities from here. Realism should never be prioritized over how good something feels to control in a Mario game. Like, you know, it's a Mario game? I don't need realistic controls for my mind-controlled mustache tank that I only get to use for a couple of minutes every 5 hours of gameplay. So let's go back to our sinful flip chart of cardinal tank sins and let's add the first cardinal tank sin that the sinful tank commits. Different axes behave inconsistently while aiming. Time to take a look at the second major cardinal tank sin of the Sherm. So motion controls are, in my opinion, far superior to normal joystick aiming controls. A joystick works perfectly fine to control movement in a three-dimensional space, but it just isn't precise enough to really make aiming feel great. So I'm not the first person to make this silly little observation. Game developers have known this for ages, which is why tons of shooty shooty bang bang games have some sort of aim assist when playing on a joystick. Motion controls on the other hand feel so much better to use. They take the natural instinct to tilt our input device of choice into the direction we want to aim at and transforms it into a feature. It is so unbelievably easy to aim perfectly precise in Breath of the Wild for example, thanks to the motion controls. It really enhances the experience. So Nintendo often has this weird and kind of bad habit of forcing motion control features into many places of their games where they simply shouldn't be forced upon us. But with the motion controls, they're spot on, in my humble opinion. Whenever I end up playing one of those weird and silly games that don't even feature mushrooms on my PlayStation 4, then I end up missing the motion controls for aiming. Aiming with the axe in God of War, for example, really could have benefited from an option to use gyro aiming. But weirdly enough, that is the one customization option that almost no developer outside of Nintendo ever decides to include into their game. For anyone not familiar with God of War, it's, you know, it's, it's cool, but the graphics are a bit cartoonish, like, like, I don't know. This doesn't even slightly resemble how the Mushroom Kingdom looks in reality. Anyway, so motion controls are something that usually really makes aiming a lot easier to do. And at least the option to use motion controls is something that I'd love to see in more games that aren't developed by Nintendo. So what has this to do with Odyssey's dumb tanks? Well, the tanks feature motion control aiming, which in theory should help to fix the horrible aiming mechanics they implemented with the joysticks. And um, I'm sure the gyro aiming would at least help to make the Sherms feel less horrible if it weren't for a single tiny problem. So first let's talk about the good things. When using the motion controls to aim to our right or to our left, then they work. They're tweaked horribly, we, we have to basically move our switch for 45 degrees to change the position of the crosshair for any noticeable distance, but you know, tilting the switch to the right moves the aim to the right, left to the left, the motion controls actually control into the right direction. Um, hooray I guess, because when using the motion controls to aim upwards or downwards, this is not the case. Moving the switch upwards sometimes moves the aim upwards. Sometimes it moves the aim upwards and then downwards and sometimes, well, sometimes it only moves the aim downwards. It's simply broken. So at first I thought that it's just my Joy-Cons not working correctly, but by now I'm about 100% sure that it's the dumb tanks that are broken, not my controllers. I tested this with the Joy-Cons stocked and removed, I tested it with a Pro controller, I tried it with a different set of Joy-Cons, the result is always the same. 
it's flat out broken. Just as a side note, I tried all these different motion control inputs on the same switch when playing Breath of the Wild and when playing Breath of the Wild, the motion controls were perfectly fine. It's really baffling to me how Nintendo, out of all companies, managed to mess up the motion controls so hard. All that they had to do was to copy the implementation they already used in Breath of the Wild previously. Anyway, so time to pull out our sinful flip chart of cardinal tank sins again and to add the second cardinal tank sin that the sinful tanks commit. The motion controls are bad at best and broken at worst. Hooray! So I hope it is clear by now why I think those tanks are such a stupid capture, aiming as a sherm with the joystick feels horrible because it is completely inconsistent while using the motion controls, well, using the motion controls doesn't work. Great tanks so far. But sadly we still aren't done with those poor and silly sherms yet because there is another thing that annoys me to no end about them. It's, it's just a tiny thing but it is something that way too many games do sometimes and something I honestly hate. So let's talk about the tank's final cardinal sin. Let's talk about the actual pew pew thing. The act of spitting out a missile just feels horrible as well. So there are a couple of things wrong with the sherm missiles. Let's start with the least problematic one. The missiles fly too slow in my humble opinion. It's not unusual that two two seconds pass from the moment we hit fire until the shot finally connects with its target. Since the shots fly so absurdly slow, they don't feel like powerful shots that a mighty tank would fire, they feel like, I don't know, like as if we miscalculated a belly dive on the moon and now we have to wait until we finally hit the death zone? They just take forever. I honestly think they could have doubled the speed of those missiles to make them feel more impactful and it probably would still be too slow. Anyway, next the only thing about the pewing that they didn't mess up. The shots feel pretty impactful. There is this explosion and still particle effect that looks like a party cannon, the screen has a subtle shake, the sound effect is Alright-ish, there is a small rumble in the Joy-Cons, you know. The impact of the shots is fine. Great job, Sherman Tanks, there is something about you that doesn't stink. The problem isn't the impact, it's pressing the shooting button itself. Whenever we cosplay as shooty-shooty military appliances and decide to pew pew, then our mustached machine of war stops for a second. It's a small thing, but let's say we move to the left, spew the cannonball and want to continue to move to the left, but well, then the shooting also stops us for a second, which means one action is always in the way of another one. We can't shoot and move. Like, having to stop whenever we spit out a missile really doesn't make the shooting feel any better. Finally, the biggest problem with the Sherm's shooting mechanics. The amount of shots that we can have at one time is arbitrarily limited to three at once. So, check this out. Here I'm mashing the pew pew button as fast as possible. So we shoot three times and then, well, then we do not shoot anything, even though we hammer the shooting button. I hate it when games do something like that. The problem here isn't that the amount of shots is limited, though I have no idea why they decided to limit those. The problem is that there is no indication that I'm currently not able to fire another shot. If we hammer the button while proudly cannoneering our cannons into a wall, then we are able to spam as many shots as we wish. But if we cannoneer them confused into the air, then we suddenly just stop to spawn shots after the third one. So when limiting the use of abilities, it is always important that there is a clear visual indication for when the limitation is active and when it ends. Take Mario Galaxy's spin attack. Mario isn't able to spam his glorious spin indefinitely in this game. So after performing a spin attack, there is this white particle effect around Mario for a moment indicating that the spin is currently recharging. Once the particles retreat back into our favorite plumber, he flashes white and that indicates to us that the spin attack is usable once again. That's good, it's, it's subtle, but unconsciously it helps us all to understand when the spin attack is usable and when it is locked. Mario Odyssey has an even better system for this in place. The mid-air jump correction thing in Odyssey is actually a cappy throw. So the visual indication of when we are able to use the mid-air attack is whether cappy is together with Mario or whether cappy is out there on an adventure alone. That's even better because the subconscious clue that we are able to use the mid-air spin or the cappy throw is actually contextualized in the gameplay. That's really, really clever. Great job, Odyssey game designers. Which is why it is so fascinating to me that the same team implemented the tank without any indication that we we're able to shoot. The only way to find out that we're only allowed to have three shots out there at once is well, it is by realizing that our button doesn't work. So I'd love to say that if we try to spawn more than three shots, that the tank then simply ignores our shooting input. But sadly, that is not what happens. What the stupid germ actually does is far more dumb and it is the final strike against my least favorite tank in any Mario game ever. So take a look at this. Did you notice it? It's hilariously stupid in my opinion. There is a small animation that plays showing how the tank overheats when we press fire if there are more than three bullets out there at once. 
So my problem with this animation isn't that it exists. Actually, it gives at least a bit of context to why our tanks suddenly stop to spit bullets. The actual problem is that this animation stops us dead in our tracks and prevents us from moving into any direction. So let's say we're fighting the Wiggler boss. We move to the left, we try to shoot it as fast as possible, but oh no! We miscounted, we pressed shooting, but there were already three bullets out there. Silly us, now the game forbids us to move to play an animation that is almost not noticeable since the tank isn't really in vision and half blurred out during a boss fight. Like the tanks are such train wrecks, it is amazing. So that's it, that's our final cardinal tank sin that we have to add to our cardinal flip chart of cardinal tank sins. The shooting feels horrible. So here we have it, case closed, the tank is dumb. That's only a single lonely fuzzy coupon for you tank. It feels horrible to aim with you, your motion controls are broken and shooting with you feels as if we softlock ourselves. We aren't even rating the captures, but tank, you made me so disappointed that I simply have to hand out this fuzzy coupon preventively. So. Is there any point in over dissecting the tanks like this? Well, kind of, maybe, a little bit. So first I just started to scribble down why I hate the tank and now that my scribbles have left me and are out there in the world causing all sort of scribble mischief, I'm finally able to get a good full night of sleep again, which, you know, it's good. But second and much more importantly, taking a closer look at the tank kind of got me to think about all the other captures in the game. And honestly, with only a couple of noteworthy exceptions, most of them have huge problems. Most of them simply aren't really fleshed out enough to even feel remotely satisfying to use as Mario does. The tank is one of the most important captures in the game. It has challenge rooms designed around it. It appears in more than one kingdom. It has a boss fight built around it. Yet it honestly feels like the first draft for a capture that still has to go through like, I don't know, like 10 iterations before it is really ready to be used in a game like Odyssey. It honestly made me wonder whether having so many completely different captures in the game maybe was a bit too ambitious. The team managed to really nail and fine-tune Mario's movement in the game. While many of the different enemies, which Mario brutally mind controls, feel, well, pretty bland to be honest. It really made me wonder if the game would be even more great if they used less development resources for stuff like the tanks or the lava bubbles or the paragoopas, the coin coffers, the typhoons, the dry bones and like all the other mediocre captures and instead focus the resources a little bit more on fleshing out the different challenges and the captures that really add to the game. What really hurts about this little tank fiasco is that the idea of having an enemy that allows us to quickly switch to shooty shooty bang bang gameplay with the press of a single button, honestly, that still sounds awesome to me. It's just the execution that completely fell flat. So I love Odyssey and no Sherm is ever going to ruin the game for me, but in case Nintendo is currently working on Odyssey's sequel, I'd love it if they just took a couple of different captures and really fleshed them out and if they focused more on interesting challenges for Mario's moveset over adding tons of half-developed ideas like the Sherms again. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe feel especially happy today and want to smash that subscribe button. Actually, you know what? Um, don't. Don't smash the subscribe button. Just, you know, just click it. That's fine. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Anyway, so I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.